and I'll share my screen. Okay, so design for QAs. Now, uh, why, uh, uh, if, if any one of you is wondering why design for QAs, um, sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Yeah, so why design for QAs is, uh, uh, me being a designer, uh, we uh, for, for designers, we usually work only silos in a team. We don't have, we don't work with two or three designers in a project. Um, um, and that uh, is a little uh, problematic at times. And then where uh, my thoughts came in as in, a QA person can be a third eye for a designer, as in they could start questioning about uh, why is this design like this? Is it really helpful to the users? Uh, what is, uh, why are you using such colors? How are the alignments? So there has to be a check for a designer as well. Like how QAs do checks for all the developed features or the developed pages or services. Uh, he, uh, the uh, QA always checks. Now this lacked in uh, uh, info design. So I thought we should come up with something uh, that could help for designers also, wherein the QA can come in and put a third eye and ask questions. So there is quality even on design check, not just the other uh, back end or the front end part of it. So that is where this started. Um, this will be the second session for the design for QAs. It was done before internally. Now it is going external. So I'll start off with the agenda. So we'll be starting with uh, top 16 app design mistakes we as designers do and how you as QAs can check on that. Then usability top 10, How? Uh, what are the top 10 usability parts of any design language that a QA can check? Alignments, as we know, this is, it's been a very old complaint from each and every client saying that, no, your designs are fine, but why isn't this same thing coming out from the developed one? One major part that I've uh, identified in my experience is alignments are a part of this that uh, uh, really mess up the uh, design. Then there's design consistency. How uh, consistent or how important is it for the design to be consistent throughout every page, every small feature, every small uh, button or however is uh, the uh, layout. And then accessibility, it's also a very big thing wherein many major companies are moving towards accessibility. They're giving a lot of uh, thought on uh, getting every kind of person to use every web app or every service or mobile app that they have. Interactions, a very underplayed uh, uh, area. Um, now, many of you or, uh, you know, you, you must have used the CRED app or any app that has a lot of interaction, a lot of animations. You tap something, some animation happens or very cool thing happens. So that improves the experience, but interactions is not something that every client would want because it is a, it's a very costly affair to do. It, it is a, a own subject by its, uh, uh, it has its own uh, uh, subject depth to it. Um, I'll also be covering a little bit of interactions of how or how, what are the minimum things that you can uh, check for on interactions on the designs. Design compatibility as in uh, how compatible is your design with screens and uh, uh, there's some uh, other parts of uh, usage of how your design is compatible on different uh, uh, areas. Then a little bit about uh, typography, some important uh, points there. Uh, moving then uh, we'll be covering file types. What are the important file types that you need to consider while uh, uh, checking these? How can you optimize with these file types and all? Then the design walkthrough. Um, so there is, uh, I'll, I'll explain that when that comes. It's a little hard to explain in a small sentence. Then brand guide to components, even that I'll cover after design walkthrough. Then we'll end by important UX laws. Wherein I won't be talking too much about important UX laws because it's not all that important for you, but it's always good to know. So I'll cover one or two laws where you understand the importance of it. And then maybe in your, when you're in your free time or as the project demands, you can go and use it uh, as required. Okay, so let's start with top 16 mistakes. Hmm. 
these are the top six in the sticks. Uh, I'll go one by one. Maybe the first couple of slides will take a little time and then we will be moving faster. So starting off with designing for yourself. This is uh, one place where uh, you as uh, QAs can uh, always ask or even uh, when someone, if a designer says, you know, I like this design, it really uh, attracts me. Or when the designer starts saying that, no, he or she likes it more, then it becomes, you know, as if you're designing it for yourself. As the line that I've written there, it's like a house party. Your favorite dish to create is a spicy and tasty chicken biryani. While perfect for you, making it exactly to your taste. But what if your guests are vegetarians, right? So all that nice uh, cooking that you've done, something that you like, which is tasty and everything that you like, but your guest doesn't like them because it's not their taste. So never design for yourself. That is what we as designers keep telling ourselves. So always as QA check if this is something that is done personally or has the designer actually thought about users. Then not using universal icons. Universal icons is something where uh, I've, I've also seen in many major websites also where they don't follow. So every icon also has its own importance of a family. As in, you have filled icons, which are black, like how you see here, this uh, compass is filled, the mail is filled, but then the messaging is not filled. So this is an outline icon. Then this uh, user icon is half filled and half outline. So this doesn't come into one family. So there's a certain uh, uh, design or a certain identification to a family of icons. If you're using outline icons, use the same outline icons. Are the icons border the same thickness all over? Sometimes it could be one pixel. At some places it could be two pixels. That is a complete no-no. That's a bad experience. So you should always check. The icons should be similar, should be of same pattern. Uh, if you're using, as I said, outlines, keep using outlines, same curvatures. If you're using right angled icons, use the same thing. Flat icons, 3D icons. If you're using 3D icons, make sure you use 3D icons all over the place. Do not shift to a minimal icon like this. So not using universal icons. Always check if the designer has done it right. Have they used the same sort of icons? Then there's too much of text. Um, this uh, is a very classic example of our very old websites, you know, in the early, uh, I mean, late uh, 90s or early 2000s, where there's a lot of text. It was, you know, you, you, there's only text, 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 and uh, nothing but uh, I'm only for you to read. So here, what happens is a user, uh, a reader, doesn't, uh, uh, will not read through whole text as it is proved uh, various times. They only scan through it. So there has to be some balance of uh, visuals, some icons or some animations or something that can drive the user to give that breathing space and then say, okay, I want to go ahead and read this. One uh, formula is minimalism, like how Microsoft does or Google does or even Apple does. They're very minimalistic. Their texts are big where you just read uh, about three, four words and then move forward, right? So if you see a designer doing a lot of text then you question, why is there so much text? Because the designer has to think how to reduce text. Maybe you split that into two pages. Maybe you split it into a long scroll or something, but too much of text is a complete no-no, right? Too many pop-ups. Again, here also, we see the, the sometimes they're nesting pop-ups. So on the pop-up, there's again another pop-up, that is one. Then again, you go, every time there's a click, there's a pop-up. So too many pop-ups pop -ups are not good. Uh, it, it's more like uh, uh, you're also blocking the content and uh, you're not letting them read everything. For everything, you're asking them to make a decision with the pop-ups, which is not right. It's, it's again a bad experience. So if you see that the uh, designer is doing a lot of pop-ups, then ask, why are they doing it? Why is it important? Is there any other way to avoid pop-ups? Can we do a slider, like something that comes from the right side? Or if there is a, a pop-up that is needed to make a decision of yes or no, can it be done minimalist, minimalistically, as in comes from the down, very small at the bottom or from the top, things like that. So 
make sure that there is that your designer doesn't uh, deal with too many pop-ups. Bad optimization. This is also, uh, I have a small example there, a very bad example of uh, the optimization. Now here, uh, the whole website is not optimized. As in the images, how many images are there? What kind of load it is taking for uh, uh, the uh, web page to load? Okay, then uh, is it uh, slowing down the uh, whole uh, experience of you know reading it or whatever content the user is looking for? Is it loading or uh, few images have been loaded? Some images have not been loaded. So this sort of uh, uh, having bad optimization is also a very big problem. The many places we still see how uh, the image don't load and what do we do next? We just close the website and move forward. So if the designer is using a lot of images, ask why is there so many images? Can we you know, reduce them? Or is there a way from the backend or a different uh, image file types that we could use to optimize the whole uh, web page experience? Can we remove some images which are not at all relevant here? Now, if you have two, three images for the same thing, can you just put one? Things like that. Bad navigation, this also. Uh, the, these, uh, we, we do see a lot of company uh, websites also, wherein the huge navigation is like how I have, uh, I have a small example to the right side, the image. So much of content, rather, a good navigation would be, I would break this up. So there are three uh, head, heads I see. See on campus technology degrees could be one. Online technology degrees could be two. Graduate technology degrees can be three. Then you go into that, then you open something. Inside that, can you put something? So there is a certain flow that has to happen when you're uh, dealing with navigation. And not just the main navigation. Also, now let's say a user is, uh, uh, in, in some sixth page from the uh, main uh, main landing page. Is there a navigation where user can derive his or her path from the main page? What if the user wants to go to the third link that he had, uh, or he or she had, you know, click. Can you, uh, uh, do you have the ability of sending the user to that third page? All these navigations are very important. So uh, here is for navigations, we do something called as card sorting. Not sure how many of you have heard, but card sorting is one way where you can really uh, optimize or give a very good navigation for any website or any uh, service that has a lot of menus in it. So if you see bulky navigations like this, options and all, you don't have those breadcrumbs, go back and ask a designer. I cannot go back to the second link from the eighth link. What's the solution? complicated forms. We all have dealt with the IRCTC forms, like very, uh, uh, very bulky, it's very near, it's very messed up. So um, as the example says, have you, you know, had to fill 20 fields to get an ebook? Is that really relevant to ask for an ebook, 20 fields to ask? Can you reduce it to 10? Can you cut it by half? No, you cannot. Then can you take it stepwise? five fields under basic info, another file, five fields under uh, uh, your job info, things like that. Or uh, the step three could be your um, reading info. Can you split it like that, right? So forms should not be long. And one problem that we all know, once the form is very long, the cache gets affected, all the filled fields gets lost. If you refresh, it is gone. So a long form will come with a lot many other features that you have to give like save, edit, and all of that. To avoid that, keep your forms always short. If you see, again, a designer doing a very long form without any segregations, without any steps involved, go ask for optimization. This cannot uh, form, a complicated form will not work well with any user. Not being responsive. So uh, there is always this problem when, uh, let's say you're, uh, you're uh, visiting some, web, uh, some website on your laptop, then you got some work, you're moving out and you're opening the same website on your mobile, but then you see that it's not uh, responsive. You will assume that, okay, there's something wrong and you will just close, you leave the site. And 
things like this also come in into uh, trust factor when they see that the website is not acting according to what they want they lose their trust a little bit so uh, many a times we designers also miss asking the clients okay do you want this responsive are we looking at uh, uh, tablets are we looking at smaller screens always uh, make sure that the designer knows about this or if the designer is missed always ask saying that no we are not doing responsive is that the requirement inventing too many patterns um so uh, here is uh, you know we know that uh, maybe there is a single click for a button but when you go to some other page in the same website you need double click for a button now that's a new pattern why is that so you you should you shouldn't always uh, invent new patterns for the user to uh, uh, do a task to be very simple something that they have done past that same thing should follow do not introduce something very new where they have not experienced yet on the website and you are if you have introduced a new pattern make sure that it is used at many places so it becomes very common for them it's become it becomes very easy for them so if your designer is doing new pattern in every page even for design maybe on one page the uh, designer is using a a star background and in one page the designer is using some other background why is that difference there why is this new pattern of design there always ask it's very uncomfortable for the user to get through these heavy things it's very it, there's a lot of visual uh, memory load the visual load to the eye then design before content is figured out uh, we designers swear by this um, we want content before uh, uh, you know uh, the, we could go ahead with design uh, many times we as designers we get in some requirements saying that you no know, hey uh, you know what there is this website we want can you please design but without content we cannot do anything because content will uh, derive will will actually give the face of the whole website as in you have to understand uh, what kind of media you want to use you have to understand what subject are you dealing with and uh, how much of text is coming on each page do you have big text you have uh, smaller headings what kind of uh, graphics will you start putting in it so all this is very important um, so if uh, when you see your designer struggling saying that no i don't have content us qas can always back your designer saying that yes we cannot do it let's go and ask you know always support your designer with this designers cannot do anything cannot go ahead with the design without any content not usability testing uh, iterations us qa should know more than anyone usability uh, usable uh, usability testing is a very core part of uh, making any user centric uh, service or a app or a design um, wherein you anything that you design anything that you develop you always test it out right you, you see in the real world if it is really working fine where are all the mistakes what is it that we have to uh, go back and uh, correct are there any un unintended consequences something that we did not intend to do but uh, uh, did it uh, uh, take it did it go in a very different direction i'll give you a very uh, small example of this very interesting one uh, unintended consequences is something that happened to netflix what happened to netflix is you know how we binge watch and netflix uh, over time they saw that people are really getting fat they are not working they are not moving out of their couches only watching watching and spending a lot of time uh, on the tv or the phone but this was not something that they intended they only wanted to give out some good cinema good content on the uh, television and they want people to enjoy with their uh, business uh, uh, whatever uh, things they had but then when people started behaving like this they saw that this is an unintended consequence that is very weird that maybe they haven't hadn't even thought about it so this is something that only when you test and you put it out you'll know so always when if your uh, designer is not usability testing the design with your clients or your stakeholders or users always ask saying that is this tested what are your readings what is the research what is it that we have to go back and change you can always ask the designer that 
attention to creativity rather than usability uh, um, there's a very old uh, problem that uh, designers have also uh, some uh, some of us we do a lot of creative stuff but then we lose the track of thinking if it is usable or not and when we do a lot of creative stuff and the usability goes the whole effort of doing everything goes wasted because none of them is usable by the user as qa is you could always check i see this is very nice very beautifully done but then have you usability checked it or usability tested it right so creativity is good but when creativity can uh, really uh, 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 destroy the whole usability part of it then it is no good making your uh, users think uh, this um, this is a very famous book I'm not sure how many of you have read it don't make me think it's by steve crook uh, the moment your website starts letting your users think what to do next that means there's a failure you have to make it in a way wherein they don't have to think they should easily know that you need to click here you need to go there you need to read this you need to watch this all of that is your website doing that is your service or your design doing that again this comes with the uh, usability check uh, there is also something you could uh, you know talk with your designer or when even when you are uh, testing it you might say you know what i'm actually thinking what to do next is this the right uh, thought process if you're thinking then let's go and change it let's see how intuitive it could be poor contrast uh this uh, this also comes under accessibility a lot wherein uh, as you see in the example the left side is a little better than the right side but then it is still a little difficult for people to read so is uh, is your text contrast ratio proper Can, is it readable enough are your images or uh, if you have, if the designer has placed a lot of text on some very busy image can uh, can you actually read it or not is it causing problem so all of this so the contrast ratio always uh, uh check uh, check if there is a issue with that bad search we all love uh, search so much so bad search wherein uh, your search or uh, i at least what i have always believed in is a search should be universal no matter from where you search it should be so dynamic that it could identify what you're searching for and uh, as the line says search is like uh, a lifeline when uh, no navigation fails you 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 you've lost somewhere you've lost your path somewhere and you don't know where to go back and in the search if it doesn't show where you have to go then it's it's of no use you have to have a very simple neat and a very intelligent search for your uh, navigation to work or for your users to at least uh work around with the site uh, stay back on the site and all so when a designer is working on search please do check how uh, what is the idea of that search what has the designer thought about uh, what has the user experience designer thought about how should it work on every page should it show with the page how are you segregating inside it do you have a category uh, under every search what kind of advanced search uh, items do you have all of this Hard to read fonts. Uh, we've seen many places, mostly in uh, some entertainment sites, wherein there's some fonts which is very hard to read. Uh, make sure that your designer doesn't do that. Usually we don't, but this is always a good checkpoint as um, top mistakes where we make uh, putting in some font because it is very nice, uh, and uh, you know, we 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 just put it for the heck of it because it looks good. But is it readable? Is it legible? Can uh, people really uh make uh, make out what is going on so even though if it is a heading you want a big heading and a very fancy font is it really uh, speaking the language of the whole uh, whole offering from the website all of that okay so i'll just give a break here just two minutes uh i see about four questions i hope uh, i don't know what it is but i hope it has been answered I'll move to the usability top ten. 
I won't uh, go on too much like how I went with the top 16 mistakes because that was the main focus. So here, these are the heuristic usability evaluations. As in, you can check uh, these as uh, some usability things with the designer, uh, as in visibility of uh, system status. So where is your, uh, or in, on what page your uh, user is, or also uh, all these uh, system status are for active, deactivated, disabled, all of these, are they in the right place or not? Then match between system and real world. If you're doing something uh, on your website, does it actually match the real world? Because many users, they, they take, uh, they do relate to the real world a lot on the, uh, um, uh, on the screen as well. Uh, if you're doing something very different from the real world, then uh, they might get confused also. Right, then uh, user control and uh, freedom. Are you really giving your uh, user a lot of freedom and control? Like, are you letting them select the text? Are the right clicks working? Uh, are you able, uh, is the user uh, able to bookmark? Are they able to go back front, uh, na the navigation, all of this. Is there that freedom for the user to move, move in and out of uh, the whole website or uh, any uh, uh, service? Consistency and standards. Are, um, does, uh, or is the designer following all the consistency and all these standards that have to be followed in designing a website or uh, any app? So always ask that. So what are the, what are the standards that you've taken for? Uh, if you see any inconsistency, always check. And this button is red over here. Why is the same cancel button uh, orange over here? Why is that inconsistency there? Error prevention. Error prevention is uh, as in, um, if a user does an error, can the uh, user prevent that error and still do the task again? Or are you blocking the user? Right, uh, if there's an error, you shouldn't be penalizing the user to do a user forgive. So uh, as the saying goes, design should be, uh, there should be some forgiveness in the design. Like if a user uh, really does something wrong, don't penalize the user. Uh, say that, no, you have to uh, do this and then let them uh, try that again. Recognition rather than recall. So this is something called as the memory load. Uh, they should recognize things in uh, in what they're dealing with rather than recalling, oh, what did I do then? What did I do here? Uh, did I do something uh, in that page? Instead of recalling such things, they should simply recognize and do it with the flow. They shouldn't start remembering things. And as a small tip, you can always, uh, as a user or, or, or the designer, or even for you all to remember, uh, a user can remember last seven things of whatever uh, they've done on the website or even on the normal this one. Seven things is what they can remember. I go with five. So uh, if, if there is some step involved that takes a toll on the user to memorize more than seven or nine things, then you should really rethink your strategy. Flexibility and efficiency of use. Again, how flexible is your website? Uh, is it uh, uh, consistent throughout uh, browsers? Is it efficient enough uh, in uh, loading the images? Are your videos working? Is it responsive? Okay. Is it accessible? All of this, how, how efficient is it? How fast is it? Or uh, what is the reason where it is from? So all of this you check. Aesthetic and minimalistic design, as I just uh, mentioned earlier. Aesthetically, it should be balanced. It should be very, very minimalistic. Do not have heavy content gain the attention of the user by having very minimalistic design. The uh, simplicity is really loved by a lot of users, right? Always ask if, if it is not aesthetically balanced. There's a lot of content. Go and ask, why is this happening like this? I see a lot of heavy content, a lot of heavy images. Can we do something about this? And then uh, help uh, users uh, recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. This is something that I've found in uh, iPhones so whenever uh, we do something on iPhone and if there's a problem, it would give me three options. Uh, cancel then something or uh, go ahead to settings and uh, change something. So it was not just telling me that uh, there is an error and we can't move forward. What is, for, what is the best previous step you can go to? Or if you want to solve, where is it that you want to go and do? Like you can direct them saying that, if you don't want this to happen, you have to do this. Don't 
block them and say sorry we can't go ahead maybe try after some time help and documentation very old every website every service needs help and documentation always have a help section always have a documentation saying that if they cannot uh, find something or they don't know how to deal or how to work with something always have the document available in the help section for them to go and read right now a uh, quick time check uh, 7 10 all right let's see how quickly we can do this alignments coming to alignments this has uh, uh, as i mentioned alignments is a very integral part of the whole uh, coming together of uh, the designs every software that every person uses nowadays have alignments in them go ahead and do those alignments please ppts your uh, i don't know visual studios even on any design this one we all have alignment uh, options there always go and use this align options and there is this page ruler that you could uh, download on your chrome where uh, as a plugin and then to check you can pull in some lines and check if things are aligned or not so alignments are very important for the whole design to look very aesthetically balanced also at times under alignments there are a lot of other things like how you are uh, aligning your fonts so never uh, have force justified fonts have a left right or a center font force justified what happens is uh, users lose track of which line they are reading on uh, buttons buttons also please check that when it is aligned it is aligned exactly center horizontally and vertically so if you look at the first button the blue button where you have two lines you see just below the button text there is a little gap but then on top of it there's no gap that means it is not aligned look at the uh, button that is bo uh, below it that shows how it is not aligned uh, the second one is where it is, is it is uh, aligned from the center so you have to uh, always check how well you are aligning the buttons uh, uh, you know these these alignments uh, work a lot on uh, uh, aesthetics and to give that very nice visual feel to it then these are some uh, lay, uh, layout things wherein how uh, properly it is laid out with the alignments how is the heading coming you know uh, if you see at the uh, layout that is here instance with text override line top this is a better way to do uh, wherein uh, you have uh, everything laid out but if you look at the center it's uh, overlapping we we often see this happening at times like and then if you look at the right side there's a right logo center logo and left logo that is there this also shows some sample on the header but how it is best to uh, align things now these are very deep topics but uh, you don't have to go by every part of it but you uh, you could always go back and ask about these things alignments the layouts then uh, we have uh, tables and grids how simplistic are your tables and grids is it too heavy is it too much of borders around if you look at do, uh, don't and do uh, though the image is not correct you can always do the don't also that is there here depends on what kind of data table you are uh, working with but then it depends on what kind of data you are dealing with and how are you uh, putting out your whole content how are you placing your whole content on the table grids wherein it is more readable right always check how how did you come to this how did you arrive at this always check with the designer then there's labels and forms um, always have uh, uh, labels that is top down rather than having side by side it becomes very hard at times if it is not properly aligned users will not know which to go next uh, they'll get confused okay should i uh, fill my uh, name then email or the name and then uh, something that's below it so it's the i flow is not proper if you have a form that is top down it is uh, much more readable and it is uh, very understandable for the users to simply hit tab fill tab fill uh these are also some hierarchies in alignments how how should you be going the hierarchies like for the example here if you see at the button at the top that says cancel and sign up uh here uh, on the right side you have a pink cancel and a blue sign up both of them have the same visual balance so the user you are not letting the user know which is important or where you want the user to click 
rather than rather you're confusing the user. So on the left side where you say sign up, you know, this is your actual action, but you have an op option where you can also cancel, maybe come back later. So you're letting the user know a direct focus of what uh, they need to do. So if your designer is doing something very weird like this, wherein uh, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, very confusing, go back and ask, do you, both of them look the same. What are we asking the user to do? The user will get confused. Then uh, readability and information. This is also uh, the same thing. The forms like how you see on the left side, on the top, forms top down, not side by side. And then uh, on, on the right side, you have uh, how the uh, information flows. The readability, is your uh, font color dark enough? Is it too light? Check all of that. Uh, all of these comes into uh, accessibility also. Now, something that uh, we all use is Zeppelin. Uh, you can always uh, ask your designer to introduce Zeppelin to your team, because if you look at this now, uh, the black screen that you see, that is a Zeppelin, a Zeppelin software. And uh, if you see the top one, you click on two uh, uh, areas, it gives you the exact pixel length, size and everything. And then you get all the CSS also. And there are a lot of plugins here. Uh, not only CSS, you get React JS and all of those things uh, where you can really just copy paste on uh, in your code. So Zeppelin is some tool. If your designer is not introducing, ask them to introduce, ask them to learn. And there is a very new feature that they've added uh, in Jira, wherein you can attach your uh, uh, mockups also inside the Jira directly where the developers or whoever, they can directly have a look at it from there. Coming to design consistency. Now there's a very good saying, saying that consistency is one of the most uh, powerful usability principles. When things always behave the same, user don't have to worry about what will happen next. This is said by uh, Jacob Nielsen. He's one of the design gurus for us. So as long as your design is consistent, people will keep using it without getting confused. So on design consistency, there are four uh, areas, visual, functional, internal and external. I'll quickly walk you through this. Visual consistency is, uh, for example, you take uh, any uh, app, say Instagram. Instagram you use uh, on the website, you use on iPhone, you use on tablet, you use on uh, Android. Is the visual same? Is the icon same? Are the whole design elements the same? Like you use uh, Microsoft Word, on a Mac or a Windows, it is still the same. So it is visually consistent. That's very important for uh, any user to identify what they what they worked with or what they're going to work with. Functional consistency is something that functions within your service. If you're using the uh, Google Maps on the iPad or on your Android, is it functioning the same? If I tap, will it do the same thing that happened on Android? Will it do the same if it uh, if I do it on iPad, or is it something else that I have to do? If it is something else, then that's a problem. Then there's, again, that is a design consistency issue, All right? So similar controls should function the same way, no matter where the product is on or which platform it is, right? Then there's internal consistency is a combination of visual and your function because both of this come in together and let's say your visual and functional have some consistency on the landing page. What if you've gone to some contact us page? Is it the same consistency? Are you maintaining the same thing within your ecosystem of that website? Always check that. External consistency is, uh, for example, I've taken Netflix. You use Netflix on a TV, you do it on iPad, phones, it's the same thing. So it's external devices, different devices, but same uh, consistency. So all of this needs to be checked. Always ask your designer, visual, functional, internal, external, are these working in the same consistency levels? Accessibility. I won't be covering much here, but then I'll just give you uh, some part of it. 
so there is this uh, person called uh, Haben uh, Girma. So Haben Girma is an American uh, disability uh, rights advocate, and she's also the first uh, graduate who's a deaf uh, and blind who uh, graduated from Harvard Law School. And imagine a deaf blind uh, graduating from Harvard Law School. Imagine the kind of accessibility that they have done so that she could pass. So accessibility goes a very long way. Few things is uh, always check for color contrast ratio. That is 4.5 to one. Uh, always ask your designer if the uh, text on the uh, black, uh, if your uh, gray text on the black background, is it passing the 4.5 to one color ratio? And always check. There's a color contrast uh, ratio uh, software that you can always install and check if your designer is not doing that. You can always go back and ask, right? Uh, then uh, disabled state, uh, this uh, color, right? disabled state doesn't qualify for uh, accessibility, right? Uh, because disabled state is something where you, know, you don't have any function on it and it's grayed out and that doesn't come under that. So I'll take you through what all can you check under accessibility. So you can check fonts, font sizes. Is it too big, too small? Is it readable or not? Then you have click tap area. Is it too small a tap area? Can, what happens if you go little right? Is the user still able to tap? Uh, then uh, you have uh, magnification. Do you have magnification in your uh, 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 system? As in, are you offering that feature magnification where people can't really uh, read small text if you have to really deal with small text? Then there's gestures and routines. Is it uh, uh, consistent, the gestures and routines? What happens uh, with two fingers, with one finger, three fingers? How is, uh, what kind of uh, um, accessible content do you have with the gestures and routines? Keyboard tab. Uh, some people, they cannot use mouse. They can only use keyboard. So with the uh, tab and space bar and return with the enter and all, are you still able to, uh, navigate through uh, the web page. Then of course I covered the color contrast ratio. Now these six things can come under all of this. All these things can come under buttons, heads, colors, placements, elements, alignments, and all of that. So all of this combined with these six things. Interactions. Uh, Interactions uh, is, uh, as I said, this is one part of it. Uh, I'll give you a few examples. Now, if you look at the heart icon there, this is a Twitter-like icon. But then, do you know that there are more than 15 frames that they've done for this? And people really like clicking that heart icon only because of its beautiful interactive animation, right? And this also imp improves the experience. If you look at the other one, when I pause, the string contracts, when I hit cross, uh, then something 100% and then it zooms in with some image in it. So it's a nice interaction, uh, interactive, uh, clickable uh, design that's done over there. It really builds up the experience. They like seeing all this. Then as uh, one more thing, if you look at the top one that's happening, there's a username that's being typed, then there's a password. What happens when there's a wrong password? It says it, you know, uh, kind of shakes a little bit. It's more about uh, giving the real world experience where you're nodding your head. And then what happens, all the uh, dots, they drop off, making space for the user, letting them know that, you know, you should try again, start typing again. These are nice kind of interactions that users will really enjoy and they'll uh, like uh, visiting your uh, uh, website or your service, your apps, right? But this is not only one. It's also about interactions, how you're letting them interact. For example, you should mind the order for the buttons. Proceed to the left, cancel to the right. That is not the right way. Proceed should be to the right side, always to the right side, and your negative should be to the left, right? Mind the style. Submit and cancel is one and the same. So what are you asking the user to interact with? Do you want them to cancel? Do you want, with, don't want them to submit? It's, it's a confusion. So how you want your users to interact is also very important. This is the tabs that I had mentioned. You can uh, visit microsoft.com also and start using tabs and you'll see how beautifully they have crafted their uh, accessibility thing there. 
and there's one more website called the smashingmagazine.com they have extensive work of all the things that i've spoken about here it's a design forum a lot of design topics and all. they have uh, it's a very old website though reachability this is also a very important part now you see how uh, phones are getting bigger and bigger every time there's a new launch so you see the green area so this is a small heat map there's a green area for the left and right hand users those are the easy reachable areas the stretch is a lighter green wherein they have to maybe adjust a little bit and then do the thumb tap hard is where they use both the hands right so th that means all your uh, uh, hard things should be on the top wherein very less that is being used it should be on the top because if you're using tabs with one hand itself you can swipe and it can you no know, switch tabs then your most important part should be in those green areas the dark green areas design compatibility yes this is also these are four things where you can uh, ask for design compatibility always ask have you done the responsive design no then we often always miss uh, often miss not always but often miss about orientation when we are doing a portrait mode for the website on a phone when you're looking at responsive what will happen if you do landscape is it really supporting that right then cross browsers always check uh, about cross browsers if it is uh, if whatever design you're doing is it what is supported with uh, all the browsers like uh, firefox your uh, safari or internet explorer chrome languages this is also very important part because uh, a designer needs to be aware of uh, working with different languages if it is a multilingual website and if it is an indian website if you are dealing with hindi and malayalam malayalam uh, letters are more than hindi when malayalam letters comes is it breaking the design always check that when you are dealing with these uh, multi languages then we have uh, typography pretty quick this one also uh, not sure how many of you know if you know brilliant there are two type of fonts very simple serif and sans serif so if a designer is giving you these terms don't get afraid that uh, he or she is showing up but these are the ones serifs are the small tails within the fonts and sans serif are the ones which do not have tails or any extensions to the fonts okay so why did i tell you this is because if you see a designer using these four fonts tell them no you cannot use these fonts this is a sin there are so many small small videos and memes where designers have used comic sans and they have been blasted in many ways there are a lot of uh, comic stuff out there for designers who have used comic sans so these are uh, four fonts which is best not to use then what are the uh, in trending fonts like these are some fonts which are really trending which are really good uh, pretty much all all of these are free fonts you don't have to even license them so we uh, designers also love them always ask saying that are you using the in trend fonts or free fonts then uh, file types pretty quick here also i'll cover this uh, file types uh, now again there is a raster and a vector raster is a uh, pixelated quality and so when you resize the raster image it uh, uh, it loses quality so you have jpeg dot gif dot png and tiff that comes under raster a vector no matter what it will not uh, lose the quality of the uh, image so examples are dot svg dot ai that is the illustrator dot cdr that is the corel draw so why am i telling you this is for example these are the two things wherein your pixelated looks like that and your quality will always remain so a jpeg png and svg can be used for the development uh, jpeg and png we all know we keep using it svg at times it doesn't uh, support few uh, places but then as much as possible please drive your designer or even your developers to be using svg more the uh, optimization levels are very good you can use just one image of svg and then resize it to whatever size and also use whatever color you want so you do not need 
1x, 2x, 3x images. One SVG will do all the work for you, right? So always ask your designer to go with SVG. If, uh, if you see that there's a development problem, then you have other options. Design walkthrough. Always ask your designer for a design walkthrough, right? Uh, for example, when the designer has done a design, ask, uh, ask the designer, what is the design idea? What is the approach that you took in coming to this idea? What are your reasonings? Why did you put that button that way? Why did you place the text like that? Why is your text here left aligned? Why is your text uh, so big or so small? What kind of decisions did you make? What is the reasoning behind those decisions? How did you see that these decisions will actually help? Uh, have you taken some inspiration? What is the kind of research that you've done, right? And what is the, uh, what, what is the process? Uh, how did you start with the process? How did you start? How did you arrive at this place? Then what kind of principles did you put into you? So these are a few questions you can always ask the designer. So you know that no, the designer has really done their homework and they're giving you some real quality and uh, real value to the uh, client for, for the first reason they've approached you for, to do the job. Brand guides to component, uh, I quickly uh, tell this. So this is some brand guides wherein you can also ask your designer to give brand guides see, saying that uh, your, these are the only text you should use. These are the only color palettes that you should use. You cannot go beyond that. This is how your buttons should look across the whole site. This is the kind of check boxes you have to use. So there's a library that they can create for you. So you can ask for that. Uh, it happens in some projects. It doesn't happen in some projects, but it's, it's always good to ask based on the bandwidth for the, uh, 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 with the designer, or uh, the kind of uh, bandwidth you have on the project, this could be done. And there's always a good thing to do, brand guide to components. And uh, finally, this is the last, uh, topic, important UX loss. As I said, I won't be covering much here, but I'll give you, uh, and th these are just about uh, 10, 11 of them, but there are a lot many. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly tell you uh, what is uh, a Hicks law, the third one. So the Hicks law explains the time it takes to <clears throat> make a decision increase with the numbers and complexity of choices. So okay. if let's say uh, for a very simple example, if you see a designer has the login page, where you have forgot password, register, uh, register with uh, Facebook as a separate place, register with Google, register with this one, that one. In the same place, you have some other options as well. So it becomes very difficult for the user to, to decide on what to do. So the choices are so complex, the user might think, okay, what should I do first? Should I go with what is recommended or should I just sign in first? So have the focus at one place where you can actually drive the user to get in and then do the rest of things. So this is called as a Hicks law. So there are many laws like this where you want to see, it is very scientifically proven all of this. And uh, many places like Google, Microsoft, and these apples, they, uh, they use these laws to great extent. And that is why it clicks for them in many ways. Like, so there's a website called uxlaws.com. You can just visit that and they have beautiful examples where you can check if, if you're interested to go a little deeper you could always do this and uh, finally if you want to understand a designer better go buy this book uh, steal like an artist it is by uh, austin cleon it's a very beautiful book a one hour read that's about it very beautifully written you'll really understand how a designer works or what are the kind of uh, difficulties or what is the kind of pros and cons a designer can have. Um, everyone, it's just not for designers, everyone should read this. And um, yeah, and there we are, we are at the end of it. Please do share some feedback, share some love. This is uh, my design team from ThoughtWorks Hyderabad. Thanks a lot. Over to you, Casey, uh, I'll be also looking at uh, the comments now yeah okay send this job